thank you very much for coming to see me today. Uh, I'm sorry I was a little bit late. I was just uh, meeting with the chancellor of the of UK and uh, got a little bit uh, late because of that. Uh, I am very excited uh, to make this announcement. Um, this is the company that I have admired for uh, last 10 years. So I always uh, respected the company and uh, look at the future of the technology. This is the company uh, I wanted to uh, make uh, become part of SoftBank. And now uh, I'm able to announce this uh, this morning. Uh, I'm so happy for this. So let me very quickly go through the transaction summary. So we are going to acquire 100% of ARM, and uh, the size of the investment is 24.3 billion pound. Uh, that is about uh, 31 billion dollars and 3.3 trillion yen. How do we uh, bring the money for that? Two thirds of that is uh, our cash on hand, and the remaining one third is the debt. So 70% our own cash, 30% is the uh, debt. This debt is the bridge loan. Uh, as you may know, uh, before this transaction, we have liquidated uh, some of the, our uh, asset in Alibaba. So that cash is already in hand. Uh, we also uh, announced that uh, uh, we would be selling, uh, we would have been selling uh, Supercell uh, stock. The cash is coming next month and a few months after that. So for that, we are going to use a bridge loan because uh, the cash is supposed to come from next month. Uh, for this transaction, we had to prepare the, uh, the cash uh, before the announcement for the certain fund as the UK uh, Exchange Board uh, required. So we have uh, utilized the uh, bridge loan from the uh, uh, Japanese bank. So therefore, uh, this is all cash transaction to the uh, current shareholder of ARM. So key transaction terms, uh, price per share is 1,700 pence. Uh, we got the unanimous board support uh, from the uh, ARM uh, board and also the uh, uh, senior management. So far, certain fund has been already all confirmed, as I said, total, total amount of cash. Scheme of arrangement uh, transaction structure. So uh, after this transaction, we would own 100% of arm um, share, and we would uh, uh, privatize the company uh, to become a part of SoftBank. Timeline, today's announcement, and scheme, of document, uh, scheme document will be posted soon, and uh, a court and shareholders meeting will be held uh, right after that. Uh, there is a, uh, you know, uh, Typical schedule for that is not that many uh, weeks. And uh, scheme become effective soon after that. So this is, this is not a long process because we do not have any competitive business today. So SoftBank has no uh, conflict of uh, interest with ARM. Therefore, we, the requirement from the, each country's government uh, for going over the uh, regulatory approval should be very minimum because we do not operate any uh, related or competitive business against ARM. So this will be very straightforward. So why are we doing this? ARM is a market leader, and next 
big paradigm shift is coming on IoT. So I believe the IoT will be so big opportunity uh, for all the mankind and all the uh, products uh, in, the, in the world. So uh, this is the beginning of paradigm shift and we are going to invest believing in for the future. So we make the arm become a private company and we invest uh, for this strategically for the long term success. The arm stakeholders impact. This is, I believe that uh, this will be uh, one incidence of uh, um, uh, endorsement into the future of the UK. I know uh, many people are concerned about uh, this complicated situation, political uh, situation of the UK. And some of my friends uh, have uh, businesses in the UK and they are very afraid and maybe some of them are even discussing to move out the headquarters out of UK to relocate to somewhere else. I am uh, totally opposite. I say this is the time that we invest with a strong commitment and uh, uh, belief in the future of UK. Okay? So I am a strong believer of uh, UK. And we preserve the ARM organization and uh, Cambridge as a headquarter. So ARM has many uh, engineers around the world, but still centered uh, nearly half of the uh, engineers are centered in UK and centered uh, mostly in Cambridge. So this is the ecosystem that ARM has created over many years which I respect is the winning formula. So I would only enhance uh, that winning formula to go invest more aggressively into the ecosystem. Therefore, I'd like to uh, double. I would commit, I, would, uh, I have a strong intention to make my intention become a commitment uh, in this transaction that we would uh, double the number of employees in UK in the next five years, okay? And uh, we maintain arms uh, neutrality and independence. As you may know, SoftBank has many operations, many companies. We have mobile business in Japan. We have mobile business in US as Sprint. Uh, we have uh, a, a large synergy group company like Alibaba, Yahoo Japan, and so on. So we have so many uh, business operations and many uh, capable CPO, CEOs and the management of each companies. And I respect those autonomy. I respect those leaders. So I would discuss with them about long-term strategy where the company should go, how could SoftBank as a group can help each other, uh, bring the synergies each other, but basically I respect the autonomy of each company. So that's how ARM is going to be operated uh, going forward. I respect the autonomy. I talk about the strategic long-term view together with them. So. Some of you may not know enough about SoftBank, so let me introduce a little bit. SoftBank has the history. We started as a PC software distribution company in Japan, as a small startup company. I have founded it by myself. No VC investment into SoftBank. Uh, I had to fund by myself. And then uh, we expand our business into PC magazines, and we acquired uh, PC uh, a publication company, number one in the U.S. and the world, uh, Ziff Davis, and then acquired Comdex, started the Yahoo Japan, invest in Alibaba, we invest in the beginning of broadband. So our SoftBank uh, group, uh, Yahoo BB, 
became the number one in speed in broadband for the fixed line internet and the lowest cost uh, among any uh, you know, the advanced countries. We acquired Japan Telecom, Vodafone Japan, which was struggling. We, I turned around and uh, invested into Sprint. And then uh, I also am um, um, a father of a new robot called Pepper. Okay? So that was my invention. So what is SoftBank? Uh, our track record, revenue is $87 billion, EBITDA $23 billion, EBIT $10 billion, market cap $68 billion. How did we grow? Uh, as you can see here, when we invest into the broadband, I, I suffered on big uh, loss every year for four years. But then I turned around and then uh, start investing into uh, uh, mobile internet and, and so on. Okay? So SoftBank has basically two arms of organization. Left hand side is the, our cash cow business, which is a steady cash flow business of operation which SoftBank owns uh, the control ourselves. So that com uh, consists of SoftBank Mobile, Sprint, Yahoo Japan. That is the operating asset, which basically uh, I, am, I am sort of a, a, you know, chairman in role, and uh, I, I support those companies' operation. Then also we have investment assets. These are the assets that SoftBank do not own control. However, we, most, most of the case, we are the largest shareholder. We have a synergistic uh, group uh, among these companies because, as I said, in most cases, we are the largest shareholder and uh, we are involved, I myself involved, in long-term strategy of those companies. Okay? So those are the investment assets. So as a track record, as I said, Vodafone Japan was struggling and losing EBIT every year, very quickly. And then after we acquired, uh, I turned around uh, together with my team to 10x in EBIT over the last 10 years, okay? It was not easy. In the beginning of the process, people said, oh, SoftBank is finally going bankrupt uh, because we made a big bet. But uh, result was fantastic, okay? So, SoftBank Mobile, as you know, in the scale business like infrastructure, scale matter. Uh, but SoftBank as a number three in scale of subscribers in Japan, number four in US, but at least Japan we are number three in scale of subscribers, but our profitability is actually number one. We are 54% EBITDA margin over the revenue, over the service revenue, and that is number one in the world. Okay? We are bigger than Verizon, AT&T, China Mobile, or any other company in the world for uh, EBITDA margin, which that I know of. Okay, uh, of any major, any significant size. Maybe there are small size company uh, in a, some small country, which uh, is which I, I don't know enough. But any scale, uh, significant size uh, telecos, we have the highest profit margin, and free cash flow wise, we are number one again uh, last year. But this year, even much more so. So we will be uh, uh, definitely number one in profitability of our operating business. One of the reasons why I have decided to announce this deal, to make this deal with Arm, is because I feel that now I have got enough confidence in turning around Sprint. So if I did not have enough confidence, I would not have decided to make the next big move 
which is the biggest uh, investment in SoftBank history in the scale of $30 billion. So that is our operating business. For the investment business, we have IRR of 44%. I think in this scale of the uh, business of investment, compared with any private equity companies, investment companies, or compared with any venture capitalist, okay, over the last 18 years, I have not known any other companies which beat this 44% compounded uh, return of investment. Okay? I don't know any other companies. If I'm wrong, please let me, let me know. I can learn more. But anyway, why, why did we have this kind of success? If you ask me, what was the key to the success? If I say only one reason, I'm not investing into the distressed asset. I am investing at the beginning of paradigm shift. When people still wonder, when people still debate whether that new paradigm is coming or not. Sometimes people think it's too risky uh, too fragile, but I see the future paradigm shift is coming. So that at the right at the beginning of the major paradigm shift, uh, we decide uh, aggressively to make investment. So that was a key to the success. So as I said, PC when when SoftBank started, that was the beginning of PC start. When PC Internet started, I invest into uh, Yahoo US. When they had only uh, 16 employees. We invest at the beginning of PC broadband, and we invest at the beginning of mobile internet. And now I say one of the biggest paradigm shift is coming, coming big time. That is IoT. If the internet gets started with interconnecting PC, the next move was interconnecting the mobile. So more internet of the main, main stream of internet shift from PC into mobile. I would say next big move is that not just the mobile, but in, internet will interconnect everything everything that has a semiconductor inside. So any uh, consumer electronics, any automobile, any infrastructure in the society, they would all get connected. That's my view. So that volume would be superseding uh, the number of uh, people uh, uh, on the earth. So that's what I believe. So, as you may know already, the ARM ships nearly 15 billion uh, chips uh, designed by ARM, okay? So ARM-based designed chips are shipped by many system-on-chip vendors around the world. They, are, they have shipped uh, 15 billion units. Th those are ARM design-based. Okay? That's the fact of the last year. And it's growing. It's growing exponentially. And I believe this will continue to be the case for next uh, decades to come. Many decades to come. ARM's total revenue uh, last year was $1.5 billion. Net income of $660 million. Here again, it is growing uh, exponentially, in my view. Where is ARM? ARM is everywhere in uh, uh, smartphones. So ARM has the market share of uh, uh, definitely over 95% of any smartphone sold uh, last year. Okay? So 
not just one chip, multiple chips inside smartphone. ARM is not only in uh, smartphone, but coming many, many chips inside automobile. And I think when automobile becomes automatic uh, driving, you know, the, uh, this will become even, even more important. ARM is going to be everywhere, as I said, going forward on Internet of Things. So I think many, many things will be connected. When those are getting connected, one thing people should worry about is security. So when things get connected, I, I would like to ask you, you may be up, upgrading, uh, updating your file in smartphone to have the security on a new operating system uh, upgrade. But how many times did you upgrade your Wi-Fi router in your home? <coughs> even very skillful uh, engineers don't even think of upgrading their Wi-Fi or a printer or, uh, uh, or a copy machine at the office uh, for upgrading for the sake of security. But when, when uh, bad guys trying to hack uh, the internet, they go not only through the smartphone or PCs, but they go through the Wi-Fi routers or printers and, and so on. When things get connected everywhere, okay, the security becomes even more important. So ARM has the uh, function called Trust Zone. So with this Trust Zone, ARM will provide more secure environment for Internet of Things. So that's good. ARM is increasing uh, royalty uh, revenue uh, per chip because uh, many of the chips are now uh, providing multi-core. Not just a multi-core, but multiple chips inside smartphone and automobile. So even though people say, oh, number of smartphone shipments volume is getting saturated. No, I say, no, no. Number of chips are increasing. Inside one chip, multi-core is again increasing. And ARM also has the graphic uh, chip uh, called Mali also has the physical IP. So next generation, uh, on and on, ARM is introducing new enhanced capabilities. So I believe ARM will be successful even more. So there are so many facts. So on this page 31, you can look at later on. Uh, you will learn more about ARM and you, you, you will know more significance of ARM, which make me excited. So not just the today, last year's figure, ARM has uh, uh, by, by itself posted their view of the market size and ARM's growth in the next, next uh, five years. I believe this is, this is a, a good forecast. Uh, my job is to enhance the management uh, view and support them to be more aggressive to invest into the technology and engineers and so on. So, as I said, ARM has over 85% uh, of mobile computing. Mobile computing, when they say mobile computing, they include uh, laptop, okay, notebook PCs. So, uh, if, it is, if you talk about only smartphone, it's over 95%. But even if you include uh, uh, laptops and, and, and uh, notebook PCs, uh, it has over 85% of market share. Uh, enterprise infrastructure, like networking, uh, mobile network uh, infrastructure, they have 15%. Embedded intelligence, over 25%. And uh, uh, mobile computing, uh, total available market size by year 2020, their view is uh, uh, $40 billion 
total available market, which is the size of the market that is a shipment of uh, chips uh, with ARM design base. Okay, so ARM has access to huge potential opportunity of the market size. $40 billion mobile computing, $36 billion enterprise infrastructure, embedded system, $45 billion, and so on. Okay? So the mobile application processors, ARM has basically uh, three uh, new architectures last sev several years. So ARM Cortex-A, which is application processor, Cortex-R, which is the real-time uh, processor, and, uh, uh, and uh, uh, M, which is the embedded, okay? So the microcontroller unit. So uh, real-time uh, 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 and application uh, processor, which is more high-end. But for the uh, Internet of Things, this em embedded intelligence become very, very important. And for the servers, it has such a small market share and uh, most of the remaining is owned by Intel. Therefore, ARM, in that sense, has a great opportunity to increase its reach. Automobile will become very exciting for the future, as I said, with the uh, driverless uh, automobile, it becomes almost like a robot. Okay, it will be a self-driving car, uh, and consumer electronics and so on. Everything, I would say, in 20, 30 years will be all connected. So next five years is the investment stage for the Internet of Things. And in 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, as time goes on, a big opportunity uh, comes in the horizon. ARM has so many partners. ARM's business model is not to manufacture uh, chips by itself. Therefore, ARM has so many partners who manufacture the chips using ARM as the core, and they add on, the value, they value add the uh, modem uh, portion of it, or uh, mem memory size, or many I.O. capabilities, graphic capability enhancement, using ARM as a core. Uh, used to be, if I look at the system on chip now, Okay, it used to be exactly like a PC motherboard. So PC motherboard is now scaled down into system on chip. Therefore, ARM has so many partners around the world for creating system on chip and uh, uh, design support partners and uh, software partners and so on. So we will support ARM with a shared vision, maintain neutrality and global relationship, and I will invest for the future of the ARM. So SoftBank and ARM will drive the next generation paradigm shift. That's my passion. That's my view. Okay? I think this is the company I wanted to do for so many years, 10 years. I've been thinking, thinking, thinking a lot. I, I was highly admiring the company. So SoftBank in our history never had number one company you know, as a core company in, in, as a platform in SoftBank. This will be our first and most important, my big bet for the future. Okay. So you've been looking at this company for well, you've been looking at ARM for many years. I understand the actual deal was done quite quickly, and I, can, I want to, wanted to ask you why suddenly this deal has been done, and whether Brexit and the devaluation of sterling had anything to do with the timing. Well, uh, Brexit did not affect uh, my decision. Okay. 
in a sense, uh, people are, many people are worried about Brexit and concerned about the com complex situation of the country. But in good or bad, did not affect. I did not make the investment because of Brexit. I did not make the uh, worry, concern because of the Brexit, Brexit either. Okay? So I decide for the viewing the paradigm shift as the opportunity. This is the beginning of IoT. I would have made this decision at this timing regardless of Brexit happened or did not happen. Okay. But, but I understand that the talks started only a couple of few weeks ago, and so yes. you know it was since Brexit, and so there must have been some opportunism about the currency devaluation. It's, it's it's not opportunistic about the currency. That was not the reason. Okay, the reason is because I got the money finally now. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have the money to invest uh, right before that. Okay, and. Uh, uh, I would have, uh, uh, you know, uh, wanted to do this, but I was waiting for the cash to come on hand. And uh, Brexit, uh, good or bad, did not affect. Okay, uh, it's true, by the way, that I have met with the chairman of ARM only two weeks ago, as the first time. Okay, and that's the that's the day I said I'm interested in. Uh, acquiring ARM as the first time. And that was the first time I met with the chairman, Stuart. Uh, of course, I've met with the former CEO and current CEO uh, multiple times, uh, talking about maybe even possibility of joint ventures or some kind of business alliance. But uh, actual, actual uh, first approach for this uh, opportunity was made only two weeks ago and uh, today is only two weeks after then so we've done all of the due diligence all of the funding in the last two weeks if I could just add uh, Palm is a fairly unique company in as much as 95% of its revenues are in US dollars so in sterling terms the stock price and the value of the company has actually increased and that's again addressing your point about currency opportunism yeah so, uh, uh, as he says, in these two weeks, actually, ARM's share price went up almost like 15%, 15%. Yeah. right? So, the currency depreciated, but ARM's share price increased. So, in U.S. dollar time, it was equal. We did not use this as the opportunity to buy cheaper. That was not the case. ARM was one of the very few companies uh, increased by 15% in the last two weeks. So this Brexit did not bring us any discount. Okay, please. Uh, Costas Pitas from Reuters News Agency. Uh, two questions. What do your investors, rather than the management, think of this deal? And also, you've given this kind of cast iron jobs guarantee regarding ARM. Uh, we've had these before, which have often not transpired to last. You said it was legally binding, but we don't think there's a precedent for that. So how, it, could you explain how is it legally binding uh, as part of your response and also what your investors think? For uh, inc doubling the employees? Yes. Okay. So I would, I would like to, uh, uh, we announced the intention of doubling the employees in the next five years, but this intention I would like to convert into the commitment legally binded. So we would uh, submit this uh, to the uh, UK takeover panel and uh, we would uh, uh, present this to the court and the court will have enforcement right to be legally that we, we fulfilled our commitment. So that specific uh, process is going to be uh, discussed with the takeover panel in the next uh, uh, several days. And uh, we would like to convert this intention into the legally binded. It is, we did not do, need to do that. It's just my way of showing commitment to UK. 
just to build on that, there will be an independent supervisor that will audit this commitment. And the panel will have legal enforceability in UK courts to make sure that that's done. So at the end of the fifth year, if we have not doubled the number of employees in UK, the court will have the right to enforce us to make it happen. And that's, that's something I'm willing, I'm, I'm willing to go that far in, in my commitment. And the increase in headcount will mirror the current trend of increases in headcount. In other words, we won't be hiring janitors. We'll probably be hiring more engineers. And just another question about investors. I asked you also what your investors think of this deal. Well, investors have to decide by themselves. <laughs> if the investor did not like it, they, they just have to sell it. If the investors uh, like it, they will buy more share of SoftBank. But I am a larger shareholder of SoftBank, by the way. I'm also uh, sharing the same uh, interest as the other shareholders. I believe this is uh, going to add a lot of value to SoftBank. Therefore, uh, it is a good thing for shareholders. That's my view. Okay? Hi, Jeremy Kahn from Bloomberg News. Um, you talked about shareholders, but I'm actually interested in what your bondholders may think of this. Um, when you announced the Alibaba and uh, Supercell sales, bondholders were, were happy because you were getting some more cash on your balance sheet. Now you're spending all this cash again on giant acquisition. What, what do you say to bondholders about this? Well, for bondholders, I think this is one of the best opportunities to buy more. <laughs> okay? Because the, the size of the margin for SoftBank bond uh, is good enough, attractive enough for those bondholders so that uh, um, you know, uh, the discount uh, on the SoftBank bond uh, would be uh, you know, attractive for many bondholders, uh, I think. And uh, uh, they just have to decide by themselves. But if you look at the SoftBank, uh, rate, of, uh, rate of our net debt over our uh, EBITDA margin, we have a very reasonable uh, multiple. And because we have sold uh, Alibaba share to some extent, and we liquidate uh, uh, you know, a supercell asset. So uh, the debt to the EBITDA multiple, net debt to the EBITDA multiple is actually not that much changing. Okay? And also, if you think about uh, the size of our uh, public company shares, if you look at the size of our public company shares, and if you look, compare with our size of debt, effectively SoftBank is net debt zero in that view. Okay? In my view, we have a very strong free cash flow, as I have just explained to you right now. We have the highest free cash flow margin against any other mobile company in the world. Okay? So we have a very strong free cash flow and strong uh, uh, public stocks. So Effectively, I, be, I believe SoftBank is net debt zero. So for the bondholders, I think it's a very safe asset with a very attractive interest rate. If I were a bond investor, I would be excited to be buying more. All right? Thank you. Please. Yeah, can you talk about uh, what opportunities there are for you to grow the arm revenues by being part of the SoftBank group? perhaps by assisting purchasing of different products. Can you just talk more freely on that? Uh, I did not understand the question very much, but... Uh, so, so now ARM will be part of the SoftBank group. Uh, some of the areas or product areas that you're excited about, are there opportunities for you to make those products grow faster? Yes. The Internet of Things, as I said, is coming big time. Uh, so it's the, one of the biggest uh, opportunity going forward. And uh, ARM can make more uh, aggressive investment in technology for that. So 
by becoming a, a, a private company within SoftBank Group, they don't have to worry about next one quarter or two quarters of uh, bottom line. So instead, uh, now is the time, I, I truly believe, now is the time to increase the number of engineers. So ARM do not own the foundry, no factory. So the biggest investment is into the engineers. So that's where uh, investment should go as the smartest engineers uh, for, for designing these uh, uh, chips. Uh, we should be encouraging them to increase the number of engineers. That's the best investment and best return on investment, okay? Especially for the IoT. Of course, uh, it has a strong uh, application processor so high end of uh, uh, products should also continue to be invested. Right. Arm has been extremely dominant with the smartphone. What makes you think it can replicate that dominance with other products in which it currently has a low market share? So I would say automobile Automobile is becoming smarter and smarter, okay? So when automobile become so smart, it, it requires to have more and more chips integrated inside the car, uh, especially when it becomes a, a driverless car. It, automobile itself will become a supercomputer which consists of a bunch of multiple chips. So ARM would be... Uh, going into that market very, very uh, aggressively and all the uh, consumer electronics also. But also the servers, okay? Uh, we, in our group, we have uh, many uh, servers in the crowd and uh, uh, the biggest cost of operating the data center and the crowd is electricity cost. So strength of arms design it uses very low power consumption. Therefore, uh, it is, it's going to decrease the cost of operation of the data center by a lot. So those are also a big opportunity for ARM to enhance. Sorry, I was just going to say BMW signed a, a deal with Intel on, on its driverless car project a few weeks ago. Uh, uh, what makes you think ARM is going to be able to compete with uh, on these platforms in, on which it's not as dominant as, as it is on the smartphone? Yeah, well, Intel, Intel should have its own opportunity all over, and ARM has its own strengths. So for any product, there is always a, a great competition, and competition uh, drives the technology to progress more. So definitely I, I'm a high admirer of Intel. Nothing wrong with Intel and I respect them. ARM um, has its, its own strengths in different uh, fields. So uh, I think uh, it will be a, a healthy uh, competition going forward. Okay. Hello. Hi. Arash Masudi, Financial Times. Could you elaborate a little bit more on your discussion with the Chancellor um, yesterday? I understand you spoke with him and the Prime Minister, and also you said this morning. And then, if your approach was two weeks ago, obviously a different government would have been in place. Did you interact with both governments, or was it just with this government in terms of your dialogue with, uh, with them? Well, uh, uh, I've, I've uh, met with the, uh, not the prior Prime Minister, uh, I've spoken to some of the uh, officials. Uh, I did not mention about ARM uh, at that time. Uh, just a general uh, concept of uh, investing into UK. So this is the new government. This is the, this is the first time I spoke about specifically investing into ARM. So yesterday before I got onto the plane, I spoke with the prime minister and Chancellor, and this morning I, I had a face-to-face -face meeting with Chancellor. I think uh, this is 
this is a, a, a you know good good communication, and I already hear uh, a, a strong support for this in, uh, investment. Uh, this is the uh, in endorsement into the uh, view of the future of UK. Hello. And, and what specifically did they ask? I mean, what, can you just elaborate on sort of nature of whether, whether did they just want to understand your assurances better? Did they want to get a sense of the way you want to invest? Did, were they comfortable with the, the dialogue? Yes. Uh, as I presented this, this uh, morning here, uh, I talked about doubling the employment in UK and keeping headquarters in UK and enhancing uh, the ecosystem. Uh, uh, centered in UK. So that was all good thing that they, they say, wow, that's good. Nothing, nothing wrong about all those endorsements. And uh, uh, many people are concerned about this complicated situation of the country. So I am one of the very few person who bet with a big size of cash uh, not just talking, you know, talking is easy, right? <laughs> talking to say, oh, UK will be still a good, great country, it's easy to say. But I'm proving that with big size cash, <laughs> right? And by the way, the multiple of the price that we are paying, including this uh, premium, is actually almost like 60x, right? Uh, of the last year's net income. So that means the company uh, have to sustain its growth and success for many years to come. I cannot hit and run, okay? I have to truly believe in the future of UK, the, the power of engineers in UK, and so on. So this is this is my big bet, right? Graham Reddick at the Guardian. Obviously, the uh, engineers' uh, arm have been key to its success. A lot of them have been there for a long time, some since the foundation of the company. What commitments have you got from arm that the key members of staff will stay after this deal? Well, I. I have not talked to the key management other than the chairman and the CEO, okay? So this afternoon, I'm going to Cambridge to talk with the senior management of ARM. Uh, for, for many of them, this was a big surprise. So I have to meet with them face to face, and I have to communicate with them my passion, my commitment, and my belief. And I believe we have a very same uh, vision for the future of the technology. So uh, I would just hope that uh, they, would, uh, they would continue to put their life, uh, passion into the company. Yes, please. The microphone to this lady. Hi, Jemima Kelly from Reuters. Um, I just wondered if, you, if there'd been any um, reaction from some of the companies that use um, the ARM products like um, Samsung or, or, or Apple, um, and whether there are any concerns that this might affect any of their independence. Uh, and secondly, um, if you could just give a bit more detail about your confidence in uh, the kind of regulatory environment, and, and just wondered if China were going to be looking at it at all, regulating China. Well, uh, in UK, there is a, a very strict rule about six people, okay? That we cannot, we could not talk to more than six people. Otherwise, we had to, you know, announce uh, publicly to the takeover panel. So, uh, I have not spoken to any of uh, my friends yet, okay? Until this announcement. So I don't know, uh, I haven't spoken with them yet. However, uh, Tim Cook, uh, uh, Jay Lee, uh, Paul Jacobs, 
uh, all those guys who are the big uh, arm customers, uh, a great friend of mine for many, many years. Okay, so Samsung, Apple, Qualcomm, uh, MediaTek, all these companies uh, I know for many, many years. So I think that uh, this is, SoftBank has no conflict of interest with them. We do not manufacture, SoftBank do not manufacture any chips and we are not any major buyer of any chips ourselves. So we have absolutely no conflict with any one of those uh, arms customers. So I don't think there would be any uh, you know, resistance or hesitation to continue to be strong partner of arm going forward. Okay? And uh, for regulatory staffs, as I said, SoftBank does not have any uh, direct business in China. Uh, so uh, there is no antitrust regulatory approval that we have to uh, apply in China. Uh, we, we have a very good relationship with China uh, through our investment into Alibaba and many other Chinese uh, internet companies. So we have a very good relationship with them. We have a very good relationship in the United States. Uh, we have uh, applied for CFS uh, 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 you know, approval in the US for the uh, safety of the United States uh, for in the process of acquiring uh, sprint uh, controlling share and, and so on. So we, we are a good partner in, in United States and we are a good partner in any other countries. Uh, we do not have, uh, see any major obstacle uh, going get approval from any countries. Yes, please. Uh, yeah, 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 you have. Hi, uh, Sam Nussi from Nikkei. Um, I know that you said that Brexit was not a factor in your decision, but given the, um, if, if a UK exit limits the flow of highly skilled workers into the UK, would that not be a concern for the future of the company? Thanks. Well, I hope, I just hope that uh, uh, whatever new rules that the government decide uh, going forward would not uh, damage the employees that the uh, arm currently has. So, uh, and they are high, highly skilled uh, people. So there, there should be no conflict of uh, 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 labor force uh, in UK. So I don't see any. Is it with your plans to um, expand the num You need to expand the number of engineers and presumably some of that uh, new workforce would be coming from continental Europe and presumably free movement of labor is very significant, important to secure those numbers, that number of people. Well, uh, the future uh, decisions by the government, I cannot decide, okay? So they decide for the sake of the success of the UK going forward, which I do not know what would be their decision. I just hope that our arms uh, skillful, very skillful engineers can continue to be attracted uh, and aggregated by ARM. Well, just to put it in context, ARM has just over 1,600 employees in the UK. So you're talking about doubling that over a five-year period. In, in the grand scheme of things, that's not a big number. So I don't think we're overly concerned about some of these uh, policy implications. Okay, please. Arjun Kapoor from CNBC. Um, I know you said this particular deal, again, was, wasn't um, you know, factored in by Brexit, but given that the pound has fallen, some of the, uh, deval uh, the uh, valuations of startups have called down a bit, and you guys are big investors in startups. Are we to see more deals of this kind in the UK, perhaps in, in the startup space, any investments in UK startups, further acquisitions of any kind of startups in the UK, um, as well as... Uh, and in particular, what kind of areas interest you? Artificial intelligence, VR, what are some of the areas that in the UK that we are strong at that you have particular interest in? Yeah, okay. So as I said, uh, in the case of ARM, uh, post-Brexit, the ARM share price 
increased by 15%, roughly, okay? 15, right? Roughly 15%. So regardless of the currency exchange uh, that uh, uh, starting became uh, uh, cheaper, did not actually affect the value of arm. So the currency helped, but share price went up. So net net, our price in US dollar term actually was flat. So Brexit that did not affect uh, us to buy cheaper or expensive. It was actually flat. Okay. So we did not use this Brexit as the opportunistic, you know, uh, reason to decide to invest. However, there are many uh, companies, very uh, a good uh, variable companies in UK, and so this, uh, uh, if people uh, have uh, reduced the, you know, uh, 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 price in, in the companies because of the situation, this could be a, a good opportunity for many other people who might be interested in investment into UK. And our, our investment may show as the confidence to them that they, if we are making you know, uh, uh, 24 billion pounds investment into UK, uh, they can take a smaller scale to make investment and we bring more confidence into that, I hope. So are we like to see SoftBank invest further into the UK in the, in the near term over the next 12 months, perhaps? I, I would hope so, but we don't have any plan other than uh, this yet. Okay, we only have time for one more question. Hi, uh, Nick Files from The Times. Uh, you, you've talked a lot about what Arm's going to bring to SoftBank. Uh, and uh, obviously you've talked about the jobs. I'm just wondering what, if you can give us more of a flow of what you think Soft can bring, SoftBank can bring to ARM uh, apart from jobs uh, because ARM um, for a long time has been talking about the areas, the paradigm shift that you're talking about and seem very well positioned and is growing very fast. So I'm curious just to hear how, you, how, how your investment plans can change that. So I'm just trying to get a, a sense of what SoftBank can bring to ARM apart from jobs, uh, because ARM was very well positioned in those areas that you're talking about uh, already. Uh, so, so how will privatising the company, uh, you know, help help make that transition? So as I said, ARM being as a public company could not be aggressive enough to increase the number of engineers or invest in R&Ds. Uh, because they had to also very carefully balance the bottom line and, and so on. But I would encourage them to invest more into engineers and R&Ds because I think this is just the beginning of big you know, uh, horizon, uh, big uh, opportunity going forward so that uh, I would only encourage them as becoming part of a private company, as a part of SoftBank Group. So that is one uh, encouragement that I will bring. Additional to that is that ARM has been uh, a technology design house, but not a service-oriented company. But I think that uh, uh, with Internet of Things, the security becomes very important. And SoftBank, as the... Um, service company for the mobile internet you know, infrastructure, uh, that we have a subscriber model and we have uh, many uh, uh, service operations. So I hope that uh, our uh, knowledge and expertise can bring additional strength to the future, which I don't know uh, specific model or things yet, but in the future as a potential, the collaboration with our synergy group uh, between Japan, US, even China, uh, and so on, that we have a, a great opportunity to help each other.